Well, thank you, everybody, and and uh, obviously uh, uh, today's news is is a, a bit of a mixed bag. Of course, we like to see that uh, Minnesota's economy is is healthy. I think it's been a long road to get there, and and uh, this is something that we knew already. Uh, so today, that's not a surprise. Republicans worked very hard uh, at getting Minnesota's economy back on track uh, with our last budget. Um, we knew that we had recovered the economy, and we knew that we had uh, refilled the reserves. Uh, we paid down about 80 or 90 percent of the school shift. Um, uh, we had uh, refilled the cash flow account, and, and we knew that we had gotten Minnesota's economy and Minnesota's budget here at the state of Minnesota back on track. Um, the, the, the part that I say uh, is a bit of a mixed bag is, uh, well, Democrats are doing a, a victory lap uh, because the state has more money. Um, unfortunately, Minnesota families uh, aren't in that same situation. And uh, a statistic that I'd like to remind you of that we haven't heard today is 49% of Minnesota families, or excuse me, 49% of Minnesotans uh, are either unemployed or underemployed. And that's an important number. Uh, what it means is Minnesota families are, are making uh, less money than they did prior to the recession. So uh, now isn't the time for a victory lap. We can't look behind us and say that the, uh, that the finish line is behind us. Uh, I don't know if we're even halfway through the race yet. Uh, but Minnesota families uh, deserve a full economic recovery. And unfortunately, uh, well, while we do have uh, a bit of a budget surplus right now, uh, Democrats took $2.1 billion, uh, a historic uh, tax increase uh, from hardware working Minnesotans. Um, and Minnesotans, frankly, don't care how much money the government has to spend. They care how much their family has to spend. And right now, because of the tax increases that the, the, that the Democrats put in place uh, over the last session, Minnesota families have less money to spend. Uh, so now isn't the time for a, a victory lap. Uh, now is the time to uh, really focus on uh, improving the situation for Minnesota families. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over. Well, just to echo what uh, Leader Doubt talked about, um, one of the interesting things that I took away from the forecast in looking at how our families are doing in Minnesota and juxtapose that with government spending. Now, the forecast did revise uh, wages, and that wage growth is up 4.2 percent, which is, is up from the previous forecast and good news, but government spending went up almost 10 percent. So unless we can get a handle on spending, um, again, our families are going to continue to lose ground in that war. We've got to bring uh, spending more in line. And I think when we look to making um, significant changes to our tax policies and that, and not only to balance our budget, to, be, to make our economy stronger, one of the things that we constantly hear from businesses and people who are investing is, please keep a level, stable playing field so that we can plan from year to year. And some of the taxes that were put on uh, as part of some last-minute negotiations uh, on the budget last year are now being discussed as being repealed, where businesses are having to plan, having to make choices when we're looking at the warehousing tax and the equipment repair and the telecom tax and other things. Um, you know, they've already had to make decisions, and a few of them have already, you know, moved their operations uh, across state lines. So. Um, I just hope uh, we'll all be mindful of the fact of doing this sort of back and forth with tax policy, that it does have a negative impact on, on our economy and on jobs, uh, and that hurts our families. Well, one of the advantages of being last is everything's been said, so uh, I won't have a whole lot to say, which is good, and then we can answer some questions. But I think generally uh, this is a good day. It's great to see, and we have for a long time, Republicans have talked about that the economy is really what uh, what drives the, the budget, what drives the forecast, what drives, and that activity doesn't happen here. And despite what some of our colleagues say, a lot of that activity is completely independent of what we do here. And I, I think generally our position ought to be to try not to do harm to those hardworking people out there that are struggling to make a living and, uh, and provide jobs for others. So I think certainly it's great news that we have a positive forecast. We've had several now in the past uh, two or three years. Uh, that is good. Uh, I'm not so sure that's a good news for uh, the citizens of the state who are obviously uh, taking out of their budget to provide those additional revenues to our budget. The reason for this graphic here is simply to point out this is a two-year to two-year comparison. The last two years are actual numbers. The, on the right side is the forecasted numbers. And all we're trying to get at here is the point that we've said all along, that it is the economic activity outside of the capital that is responsible for the growth of the economy. And when you have a growing economy, you get growing revenues. And so we had this $3 billion-plus of 
additional revenue above and beyond the budget we passed that has provided a substantial amount of money to the fulfilling the reserves, paying off the school aid shift, et cetera, and leaving some on the bottom line. The projected budget and the forecast we have is showing a, about a billion dollars in surplus, uh, but we also had an increase in taxes of 2.1 billion. My point, I guess, is what we've done is clearly unnecessary. Uh, we did not need to pass $2 billion of additional taxes, put that our hand in the pockets of, uh, of Minnesota citizens to help us feel better here in St. Paul. We've got a billion dollars of money that we've collected above and beyond the already 10% growth in spending that we projected that really shouldn't be here. It should be back in the economy. And so we think that some of the things that have been talked about, uh, we've talked about for the past several months, certainly the business to business taxes, uh, we had a, we had a, Repeal those. Those are not helpful to the economy, and some of them haven't even taken effect yet, but they're in the projections. We need to get that back into place so that the business uh, uh, owners and the ma can do some planning going forward that it makes sense. So uh, generally, good news for the economy. We have great, hardworking uh, citizens in this state. We're very proud to be citizens and proud to be a part of it. But we need to be more prudent about how we do our budgeting and be less, uh, I guess, uh, uh, desirous of taking money out of that economy on the theory that we know how to spend it better than they do. So at that point, if you have any questions, we can try to answer those. The governor will have a partner in you guys in the taxes he laid out for elimination or well, conformity. He, he made his comments, and he didn't really, I mean, he, he indicated that he would do that. He's indicated in the past that he would do that. We just are here to help him keep that promise. So, yes, if, he, uh, if he's serious about that, he's going to find willing partners on our side. So are you suggesting that the uh, surplus would be higher if uh, the governor and Democratic uh, members of the legislature had not raised these taxes? Where would we be if it were, if this last two all. years? I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm just suggesting that, that the approach we took was to say, let it, let's manage spending to fit the uh, economic growth that we anticipated. And what we found out is that when we did that, we actually, uh, the economy responded and did much better. All we're saying is we didn't need to put that additional burden on the economy. It, and the fact that we have a surplus, in my opinion, uh, shows that we, uh, we did something that was unneeded. Well, maybe I don't understand then. Uh, where would we be if it were not for the Democratic legislature? And he gave the Republicans credit for the two previous years. Sure. I, you know, I think, um, I think it's important to remember that there is a lot of uncertainty. And everybody said, uh, you know, obviously we need to wait for the February forecast. A couple of things that are really important to remember, um, this budget forecast doesn't really reflect uh, anything uh, about the tax increases that were put in place, uh, you know, the historic tax increases that were put in place by the Democrats this last session. Um, uh, so we don't know exactly what the impact of those tax increases is going to be on the economy. It's not reflected in this document. Um, uh, but what we did show over the last two years is that uh, you, can, you can balance the budget and create revenue for the state of Minnesota without increasing taxes. In fact, and I think that's what the graphic really shows you, uh, that without increasing taxes, we actually brought more revenue into the state of Minnesota than they are with $2.1 bill, billion dollars of new tax increases that frankly are going to hurt Minnesota families and, and hurt Minnesota's economy. I think everybody understands that those new taxes are going to be hurtful. Even the governor has, himself has said that some of those, those new tax increases are a mistake. His words. Um, and, and, and obviously he's talked about the uncession. I think we need to fix some of those mistakes. We agree with him. Uh, but, but exactly what we said during session is true. Uh, we didn't need to put these tax increases in place. Minnesota's economy had been put on a path to recovery uh, because of the Republican budget that we did over the last couple of years uh, by not raising taxes. This $3 billion of, of revenue would not have been there had we increased taxes. And the reason is uh, we get our money, and I, I keep saying this, we get our money from, from income taxes and from sales taxes. Well, what do you need for the state to be successful and get more money? You need more people uh, working and making more money and, and more people with with, with spendable money in their pocket. And when we take money out of the economy... The forecast shows that in the next two years, things are, gonna, are getting better, performing stronger than the national economy. <laughs> well, correct, but remember that, and that's why I say, and even the governor, the commissioner, uh, and, the, and the Democrat leaders had said there's a lot of uncertainty here. And, and what I mean by that is remember that the, the impacts of the governor's historic tax increases are not reflected uh, in, in this budget forecast for the most part. Also, Obamacare. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty with Obamacare. Uh, the, the numbers of, of people that are signing up for public programs through the exchange are greatly exceeding uh, the projections and greatly exceeding the number of people that are signing up 
up for the private programs. Uh, if that continues, uh, there's going to be a large expense and, and cost to the taxpayers of Minnesota uh, for, for, for bearing the burden of, that, of that, uh, those additional people. Um, that's not reflected at all in this, in this document. Uh, those are very big, uh, uncertain uh, pieces of information that, that are not dealt with in this document. So uh, Obamacare and the governor's historic tax increases uh, are, are, are huge uh, factors of uncertainty moving forward. I'm uh, having a hard time on the, on the working men, men and women of Minnesota being in worse shape because of the, of the taxes, yet the statistics all show that, for example, unemployment in Minnesota is lower than the national average, um, that, in, that wages are increasing at a rate faster than the national average. So I'm having a hard time understanding where people are getting hurt. Uh, sure. Let me, let me explain. And the, I think the most important statistic today is the one that I mentioned. And let me explain it a little further. Deed did a presentation to LCPFP uh, a couple of weeks ago, the week before last. Um, and one of their slides was uh, about underemployment. Now, when, when the recession hit and Minnesotans were laid off, uh, the unemployment rate spiked. After the, the, the recession started to recover, uh, people took jobs, but they took jobs at lower incomes and lower wages than they were used to and, and that their families were used to. That, that statistic is 49% of Minnesotans are either unemployed or underemployed. That means they're working at a job at, at a far less income uh, than they're accustomed to. That means that Minnesota families aren't seeing the surplus uh, that, that, that Democrats are doing a victory lap here about. Um, Minnesota families deserve to see the, the, the impacts of a recovery. Minnesota, and I'll repeat it one more time, Minnesota families don't care how much money Minnesota government has to spend. They care how much their family has to spend. That, and they have less to spend today because money, of the Democrats. Is that money as, as, as uh, the GMP in Minnesota raises and stuff, then is that money going into the hands of the wealthy? Is that why it's not going into the hands of the, uh, the middle class? I'm sorry, I'm not, you're, you're, as the Minnesota economy has improved, according to most data, uh, and you're saying, but that the wealth isn't going to the middle class. Where is that wealth going? That it certainly is more than a two billion dollar tax increase, for example. Is is that the entirety of where that wealth is going in this new, more vibrant economy? Well, I, I'm not an economist. I, I can't tell you where all the wealth is going. But I think the the point is that that we want to have everybody working and everybody working at full time jobs, being able to support their families. And there's no question that policy decision, decisions that have been made here in the federal government are impacting that. You look at the, one of the effects of the Obamacare legislation, for example, is there's going to be a lot more part-time employment. It's just a fact that, that we've seen already the data that supports that, and I think there will be continued evidence of that. So I think that when you make policy choices, it does have an impact on what people do, uh, what decisions they make. And, and I think in, in uh, the, the budget forecast we get, we've been notoriously uh, uh, unable to project that dynamic interplay of what happens when we do these tax changes and what the effect is on decisions, but we know they're there. I've talked to countless businesses that have talked about uh, the prospective impact of a warehouse tax, for example, that hasn't even been put in place yet, but they're already making contracts to do their warehousing out of state. Now, what effect does that have on the people that work in that company? So I think when you talk about the economy, it's very large. There's lots of things that go into it. The total effect of the economy can be positive that we're growing, but how it affects families and individuals is very disparate. And the fact, I think, is we need to make sure that we're not doing harm to people's abilities to provide for themselves and their families. I think in some cases we have. Senator Hanna, if I'm not mistaken, I think you're on record supporting the uh, extra allowance for caregivers, I think the 5% campaign. Is there any other spending areas that you're – Interested in. I'm not interested in growing the size of the budget. I think we've already seen a 10 percent growth in the budget. I, what I've always said is that, that we ought to be making sure that we're doing the high priority things. I think we missed an opportunity this last session to make uh, that particular element a priority, and I think we should address that, and I, I, I hope that we will. What I was getting at is if this number holds up through February, the governor has already laid out you know, $450 million of tax changes that he wants to make, what should happen with the rest if you had your way? <laughs> well, I don't ever often have my way. I can't. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I would say that, that we ought to be looking, in my opinion, we ought to be looking at uh, some of the tax choices. I think Representative Dow talked about that well, that, that these were mistakes or that they need to be fixed or whatever the 
de descriptions the governor and the Democrats have used. We ought to do that. We ought to look at that. There were some mistakes made. I do think it was also a mistake to neglect uh, that particular part of the spending budget, and we ought to address that as well. I, I uh, will wait and see what the governor's uh, Across suggests. Across the board, tax cuts, as uh, some of you have uh, supported in the past, or rebates, as this legislature has done in the past? I think at a minimum, in my opinion, we ought to make sure that we uh, take care of the business-to-business -business taxes and repeal those that have been characterized as mistakes, and this is going to be the unsession, let's undo them. Uh, I think the marriage penalty, uh, it's going to be a little bit too little too late, by the, unless we do it like right away, the first week of session, pass it, sign it, and get into law uh, for this uh, next tax year. But there are some things that we ought to do, could do, uh, and the fact that uh, we're collecting revenues above and beyond the you know, $2 billion of so-called in tax increases we made uh, should give us pause about uh, whether we have the right level of taxation in place. Other questions? Very good. Thank you. Thank you.